Hello everybody, welcome to the shop and welcome to another lesson in old engine basics. This is another uh, video from a request of one of my viewers. He wanted to understand, better understand some of the basic components of old engines and one of the things that he was asking about was lubrication, different types of lubrication, uh, how it works, etc, etc. So I have a pretty decent uh, setup of different lubricators here, and this is only a part of my collection, the majority of lubrication you'll see on hit and miss engines and oil field engines and uh, stationary power of that nature, it's going to be a total loss lubrication system, What, which means you drip the oil in, you feed the oil in somehow, the oil does its thing and it drips out. It either drips onto the ground or it drips into a a trough or a pan on the engine and usually just trickles down to a, a drain hole where the engineer would probably have a little oil cup or bucket to catch the waste oil. There are a couple of cases here and there where the oil gets used over and over. Uh, for example, the Fairbanks Morse 32E, the four-cylinder two-stroke diesel that we have up at the Zagre Farm Museum that uses a recirculating oil system. And click on it right here and that video will explain the oil system and with in that case the oil is recirculated over and over. Um, the main purpose is it, it's such a huge engine it would be a total, it would be a huge use of uh, waste of oil if you just use the oil once. Also my Bovard and Seafang which is outside and I can't show it to you because we're in the middle of a blizzard right now and that's why I'm have the time to make this video. Uh, the Bovard and Seafang has an enclosed crankcase and it is splash lubricated. So that oil gets used over and over. So the two very basic types of lubrication we have on engines are oil lubrication and grease lubrication. Most of what we have here are oilers and then we have three grease cups over here. And then for the oil side of things which is seen a lot more there's force feed lubrication there's drip feed lubrication, which is all of these. Oil bath lubrication, which I just mentioned, my Bovard and Seafang. And then there's also a couple other goofball styles of oiling, which I will show you. Uh, for example, chain oilers, just oil holes, and uh, what I would call an oil packing. And I'll show you that also. Okay, so I'll start with the basic, most basic first, is grease cups. A lot of the small uh, single cylinder hit and miss farm engines, hopper cooled farm engines will have grease cups on them. Uh, they're easy to use, easy to maintain, the grease stays around for a while um, and it's just a common common way to uh, lubricate these smaller engines. And I have three slightly different types of grease cups here. First type is the most common type you'll ever see. It screws apart and that's that. It's just a cup threaded and pipe thread over here which will screw into your bearing or whatever is going to be lubricated. You pack your grease into this cup here and you screw it together and as you screw this cup down it'll force the grease out and it'll force grease into the bearing. Very simple. Here's another slightly different style of grease cup. Same basic concept except this lid it's just a lid, it doesn't force the grease in, and then the inside of the cup is also threaded, and you can take this plunger out, like so, and again, so you, you see it's the same concept except uh, there's threads on the ID rather than the OD of the cup, and the grease gets packed in here rather than up here. This last grease cup, very nice heavy machine brass grease cup, I had no purpose for this, but it was eight bucks at a flea market, and I just couldn't resist. So I bought it. And this is what this looks like. Slightly different again, but same general concept. The cup here is not threaded. Rather, the ram is threaded into the lid here, and it's spring-loaded. So the way this works is it 
the spring is what delivers the grease out. And if you want it to deliver grease, you, you back off this screw a little bit, and you see now there's a space in there. Of course, the plunger is all the way at the bottom, so it's not going to push anything out. But let's say there was some grease in there. I've backed this off. Now the spring that's compressed up here is going to push that plunger down, and it's going to force grease out, and this threaded screw here is going to travel down the bore along with the plunger until this knob hits the cap again. So it's sort of a, a time release grease cup. I don't really know what the purpose, specific purpose of these were for. Um, perhaps you didn't need to tend to it as often and it could lubricate while the engine was running. Maybe if this was on something that was moving, right before you start the engine you could turn this a couple threads out and then as the engine runs it'll lubricate itself and replenish the grease. I also remember seeing somewhere that these were referred to as marine engine lubricators. Why they were used for marine applications I do not know. So next up we have the very simplest of drip oilers. I have two examples here for you. But anyway, their operation is very simple. This is the oil reservoir. Clear glass, so you can monitor the oil level. There's a fill of some sort that's always on top. So you can fill it with an oil can. And then there's a sight glass, so you can watch the drip rate of the oil as it drips out. And the thread here is almost always pipe thread. This particular thread here is eighth inch NPT. And the way this oiler works, this knob up here operates a pin that runs down the center with a tapered tip, and the tip seats against the hole inside there. And when you flip this up, it pulls the pin up and it allows oil from the reservoir to flow through. You can see the hole right there. It'll flow through and drip out the outlet. And you can adjust the oil flow rate by turning this threaded knob. And as you thread it counterclockwise, it'll bring the nut up. And it'll also bring up this knob here, which will pull the pin higher up, which will pull the needle further away from the seat and allow faster oil flow. This is just about the same. It is a very pretty oiler. It used to be brass plated, but it has seen better days. This is made by the Nathan Manufacturing Company in New York, number 187. And what's unique about this, unlike this oiler, you can preset a flow rate with the knob and then just flip it on, flip it off. With this, there's no preset rate. There's a, a lock nut, and th this is the same um, shaft that goes here. Down, down the center with a tapered needle that goes into a seat. But as you screw this screw up, see that's uh, completely closed. Now you screw it down and you can watch it'll pull the shaft up and that'll increase your flow rate and you can lock it with this lock nut. So here's that first oiler taken apart. So the bottom piece and you can see through there, there's the hole that the uh, that the needle will seat against. Here's the upper part. Again, no moving parts. There's a gasket. There's an upper and lower gasket. Lastly, here's the needle valve. See there's the tapered needle, which allows you to meter your flow. Now this is one assembly. It is disassemblable, but not easily. This spring is up against this shoulder here, this little washer, which I believe is soldered on. This nut is over the spring and what holds it all together is this knob here and you see there's a pin through it so now you can see it go together this goes in like so and you thread the nut onto the threaded stud and then this needle seats in like that right against that little through hole we see okay everybody I'm gonna stop it here for the first video this is turning into a much longer uh, video than I expected. So this will be the end of part one. Keep an eye out for part two. It'll be coming up very shortly. Uh, make sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and you want to keep up to date with the next videos coming out. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoy this video, if you're enjoying this series. And thanks for watching and as always, come on back for more.